Hey guys, so today I'll be showing you a new way to collimate a telescope, uh, particularly a Newtonian reflector. Now normally when I'm uh, collimating a telescope, I use a combination uh, tube like this one. So this is a Cheshire and a side tube all in one. And you can get a closer look at that. And for anyone who is new to astronomy or astroimaging, uh, a Cheshire like this allows you to collimate the telescope, that is align all of the mirrors, so that way you get sharp concentric stars uh, and it minimizes any distortions at the edges. The other option for collimating a telescope is a laser such as this one. So this is a pretty decent quality Hotec laser. You can turn it on like that. And I've collimated this laser, so the beam is uh, it's, it's going straight in one direction, and that allows me to get pretty good collimation. Uh, but again, there are downsides to a laser as well, particularly that if the laser gets out of collimation, then your collimation is not going to be exact. And the simplest uh, option is this lens cap with a hole in the exact center, and it's colored silver on the inside. Uh, so this is the most basic collimation tool that you can use. But after having used all of those, I was still having some trouble getting perfectly circular stars at the edge of my uh, my camera sensor when I was doing astroimaging. So I decided I would try out something new. And that's where this comes in. This is the Ocal from Hercules. Uh, now this is a, a new company that just got into, into collimation. Uh, they have been making some other uh, knickknacks for astronomy in the past, uh, but this is the first uh, thing from them that I'm actually trying out. So I'll be showing you how to use this uh, today, or we can go through it together. So the first thing that comes in the box is this 1.5 meter USB cable. And this is the actual collimating device itself. So as you can see, very, very well built. It's a nice solid chunk of aluminum. And if you take off the cap at the front over here, underneath you've got M42 threads to attach this to your telescope. And there's a very tiny little camera in the exact center. And on the other side, you've got a USB 3 port. So it looks like a pretty simple device. So we'll see uh, how that goes. And the version that I got is the basic PC version, uh, but they do have another version as well. That's the Pro version, which comes with some extra adapters so that you can uh, attach it to your cell phone. So it makes it a bit easier to collimate in the field when you're out there and when you don't have access to a PC. But in my case, I'm primarily an astroimager, uh, so I'll always be using my, my laptop when I'm out there so I can still use it for collimating and I don't need to use a cell phone just to keep things simple. So let's see uh, how this works in practice. Okay, now let's see how this attaches to the telescope. Here's my telescope that I primarily use for astroimaging. And as you can see, I'm using an ASI 1600 camera. I've got an electronic filter wheel, my off-axis guider with the guide camera, and that's my focuser there. And that's the uh, ZWO electronic focuser. So what I'm going to do is basically take this entire part off and attach the OCAL collimator directly to the telescope. I'm going to leave my comma corrector in there, so I'll be attaching uh, the OCAL to the comma corrector. So now we have the OCAL attached to the telescope. Uh, you want the sensor of the OCAL to be about the same distance from your main mirror as the sensor of your imaging camera. So I use this little adapter in the way to take up that uh, spacing that's normally taken by my camera, my off-axis guider, and anything else I have in there. And that is attached using the M42 threads. And we have the USB cable going all the way over here to the laptop. Now that we have the OCAL connected to the telescope and the computer using the USB cable, we need to download some software. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Google and type in OCAL world. And when we do that, that's the first result, OCALworld.com. Click on that. And 
and over here we'll go to the uh, sup the support tab and you can download the manual right over there and that manual is going to tell you exactly what to do uh, each step of the way to install the device and how to do the collimation uh, but what I'm going to do is just skip to the next step over here and I'll go to download tab up here and uh, you have to download the driver for the OCAL so that's the first one here and after you download the driver and install that you go to the calibration centering code and the calibration centering code is going to be uh, right on top of your device so it'll be a code like uh, 1D527 and it's unique to each OCAL device so what we're going to do is hit download and open this resulting Excel file and then you find your code on the left over here you can also control F to find and just type in the code that's uh, that's given behind your OCAL so let's say this is my code over here 1D527 in the next Excel cell over here uh, it, it has another number so this is the calibration code for your particular device so you just copy that control C or command C if you're on a Mac close this one out close that this is the OCAL app that I'd installed so I will open the app or actually before I open the app what I need to do is I will go to where that app is installed so open file location and there is this document here focus.txt you're gonna double click to open focus.txt you'll select whatever number is given in there and replace it with the number that you copied and pasted so control V to paste now this is the correct number for me so I'm just going to leave it in here but once you've pasted your particular number let's go to file and save and once you've saved you can close this and then you can open the OCAL app so here is what comes up when you double click on the OCAL app and you click turn on camera there we go so that's what the OCAL is looking at right now while looking into my scope uh, now what I'm going to do is make this a little bit larger here so it's easier to see just drag the edges of the screen there we go so I'm just going to organize this a little bit better and there we go okay so this looks a little bit small so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to camera settings over here and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit or actually what I need to do to zoom in is use your mouse wheel so that's gonna allow you to zoom in so use your mouse wheel to zoom in and then you can adjust the settings over here so you can adjust the brightness you can adjust the contrast uh, white balance uh, anything you want and under the camera control tab over here you can adjust the focus so it's out of focus a bit better focus so this seems to be about the best focus for my device and over here you can adjust the exposure as well so I'm gonna leave the exposure a little bit bright so it's easier to see I'll leave it at minus two in my case so once you've got that you can close that now looking at this what I'm gonna have to do here is on the right I'm gonna enable a couple of circles I'm just gonna zoom in and see how big that circle is okay so that main circle is very very large uh, what I'm gonna do is just make it smaller so just grab this bar make it smaller and another circle make this one smaller as well you can also just type in the numbers over here if you want so let's say I type in 300 there it is that's the red one there and you can make one more circle we'll put this one as 150 okay and yeah now we can zoom back in okay so that is looking pretty decent um, going to decrease the size further for the green one there we go that seems about correct um, now in some cases there's going to be a little bit of an offset because you can see that 
the green circle doesn't perfectly align with the inside of my focuser. So what I can do to correct that is use this offset button. So vertical and horizontal offset. So let's move those and see which way these move. Oh yes, you have to select center offset. So zero, let's just zero this one back. You have to select this tab here, center offset. And that will allow you to move this left or right. So in my case, I'm gonna move it down a little bit and then I will move it to the right. A little to the left. Okay, I think I have to make it a little bit smaller in my case. So instead of 369, let's try 350. Nope, too small. Okay, let's uh, also turn off the system volume here. There we go, we don't need that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I might have to make it a tiny bit smaller, so 365. Okay, that looks good. Uh, I have to move it a tiny bit higher up and a tiny bit to the left. Yeah, you can get pretty precise with this uh, if you want to spend a lot of time on it, but I'm not going to do that right now. There we go. Okay, that, that seems pretty close. Uh, so as you can see, my collimation is not too far off here. My secondary mirror is is pretty well centered um, and I might have to adjust that a little bit later on and then the blue one over here let's make that a bit smaller okay let's do 50 Okay, and I can enable the central crosshair over there. Um, we'll leave that off for now. So the first thing I wanna do here is make sure my secondary is centered. That's close enough. And I wanna be able to see the reflection of the primary mirror in here. Now in my case, I can see two of the clips, but I can't quite see the third clip. Uh, I'm just going to orient my telescope into a position where I would normally be imaging. So I'm just going to loosen the clutches here and angle it at about a, about a 45 to 50 degree uh, angle, which is where I normally image. So I'm just going to collimate there as well, just to get the most accurate collimation. So I can see two of these uh, clips on the sides of my primary mirror, but I can't see the third clip. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm going to adjust my secondary mirror. So I have some bobs knobs installed on the secondary mirror. So I'm going to adjust the screws there one by one until I can see all three clips. So just going to reach the front of the telescope and do that right now and we'll see what effect that has on the collimation. There you can see my hand in there. So loosening the mirror. There we go, you can start to see all three of the clips now. There we go, so that's the first clip, second clip, and third clip. So those are looking pretty good. I can also make some adjustments to the camera settings if I wanna be able to see them better. So I can increase the exposure further. Okay, so it looks like my primary mirror is pretty well visible there just going to tighten this a little more that one a little more 
Yeah, all three of my clips are pretty well visible, so I'm just gonna tighten down the screws gently so they don't move later when we're collimating. And all three of the clips are still pretty well visible, so that's great. I'm gonna enable the second circle over here again. I might have to make that one a little bit larger. There we go, pretty close. I'll have to move the offset a tiny bit here to the right, just to get better alignment for the outer green circle over here. And my secondary is pretty good as well. Now, now that I can see all three of these clips in here, now we can look to see if the primary mirror is Good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here using my mouse. Now what you're seeing over right over here in the center is the, the sensor of the OCAL itself. Uh, now if this was not well, sense, well centered, I would have to adjust it using my primary mirror screws. So right behind the primary mirror there are a couple of screws. Uh, two two sets, well, three sets of two screws. I'm just gonna loosen the taller screws, which are the locking screws, so that I can make some adjustments. And when you see, I'm gonna, okay, there we go. So I'm making some adjustments to the primary mirror. And as you can see right now, you can see it moving. And right in the center there, what you're seeing uh, right over here is the donut uh, that I have on my primary mirror. So this is the primary mirror donut. And you can see right now it's it's not lined up with the OCAL sensor. So this darker one is the OCAL sensor. So what I'm trying to do here by collimating is trying to line up the OCAL sensor with the donut on my primary mirror over here. So what I like to do is uh, I like to make sure uh, all of my collimation screws are as tight as they go at first and then I slowly loosen them so that decreases the chances of your collimation shifting as your scope moves throughout the night. So I have all the screws pretty tight uh, already so I'm just going to so that's uh, this is what it looks like when all of my collimation screws are as tight as they'll go so pretty close. Okay, so this is what it looks like when all my collimation screws are tight. So now I'm just going to gently loosen them a little bit one by one until the donut on my primary mirror lines up perfectly with the OCAL sensor. So if one of the screws feels like you can't move it any further, uh, just use the other two. So you should be able to complete the collimation using just, just two of the three screws. There we go. So that looks pretty well centered. I'm going to enable this uh, center mark. So it looks like in this case my donut might actually be slightly off center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center the actual uh, sensor, the darker spot that was visible. And then I'm going to adjust my donut later on. Okay, yep, right about there. There we go. So that looks like it's perfectly centered. I am going to uh, change the focus here to see if it gets any sharper. Looks like that is as close as I get. And right over there. So it looks like my scope should be collimated now. Uh, the sensor of the, of the OCAL camera is exactly in the center over here. And that's, uh, that should be it. So everything should be collimated now. You can zoom back out see if anything has moved. 
at this point this should definitely be close enough uh, you don't need to get too too fussy with this but if you're like me and you like to get as close as possible you can still do a little bit more Okay, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. And if we zoom in all the way, you see that this blocky one here is the center of the actual sensor and this round one over here is the donut on my primary mirror which seems to be a little bit off, but we'll go by the center of the sensor here. that should give us pretty good results okay so it looks like we're we're pretty close to centered now uh, and at this point you can turn off the camera and disconnect the camera and I'm also just going to verify this with the Cheshire and the laser collimator and see how close we get and uh, when I get a chance to take it out and test it under the stars that should give me a better idea of how well this device did so I will uh, post a follow-up video to see if I'm finally getting perfectly round stars in the corner of my sensor. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.